Who is your daddy? I am your father. You fathers will understand. My father taught me many things. I got an idea. How about you all sit there quietly while I make dad noises? Welcome back to another episode of Fathers of the Grind. Thank you guys for sticking with us. I'm here with Derek Teague. Hello, friend. Hello. <laughs> My name is Tim Nestor, and we are here to debate, to argue, to de- degrade each other, to do what we can to insult each other's opinions about one of the biggest generations of video game consoles, the sixth generation. We even had some listeners chime, chime in on this as well. So, Derek, I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to making fun of each other's opinions. Uh, let's see how terrible yours is. Generally, it falls into the Carol. Car- uh, Forget mm-hmm. this. I'm not, I'm not even going to try to insult you. I already screwed it up. <laughs> Move along. Yeah. Edit it out. Censor it. In- intimidation. Censor. <laughs> Hashtag censored. Derek yeah. says beep. Uh, yeah, man, that was the easy, easiest debate in the history of debates right there. Yeah, that was totally terrible. Wrong. Wow. All right, so PlayStation 2, the Xbox, Sega Dreamcast, the Nintendo GameCube. These systems were all part of the beloved sixth generation of consoles. And it's a very interesting generation, too. It's where we saw um, uh, one of these four really take off and dominate in terms of sales. We saw one that still looked at super fondly be the final, kind of the swan song of a company in the Dreamcast for Sega. And then, of course, you saw GameCube, which looked like the decline of Nintendo was going to continue before what would come in the seventh generation with their absolutely crazy success with the Wii. So, very interesting generation as, as wheels were turning, things were changing, and technology was better than ever. If, if you think about the jump from the N64 and PlayStation 1 and Sega Saturn days, the jump to this was crazy. So, let's just get right into it. I, I went ahead and linked the, um, this page for you. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll be able to see the chart that talks about technical comparisons and launch prices and uh, and things like that. So, let's just let's just jump right into it. Which of these systems did you buy first? I know you I think you owned multiple of these, but which of these sixth generation systems did you own first? I don't know. I'd actually have to look at the release dates because I did own all of them. All right, so here so here's the release date. So first was the Dreamcast came out in 1999. So then that's going to be the answer because I got that on day one. I actually pre-ordered that. Okay, so you were excited for Sega's return to form after the the Saturn didn't quite get it done. Yeah, I think the big seller for me. This is going to be crazy, but this goes back to my Mortal Kombat fan boy days. They mm-hmm. released on the day the Dreamcast launched. One of the games that released was Mortal Kombat Gold. Which was all it was was just Mortal Kombat 4 with a little bit of extra content and a little okay. bit better graphics because it's on the Dreamcast compared to the, the PlayStation. Mm-hmm. And that was why I bought it. I was like, I, okay. I gotta have this game. So I pre ordered so it, it and got that game. It released for $199.99. Yep. So it was a very, I mean, that is a great price for a brand new console to release at. Um, mm-hmm. Nintendo matched that two years later when they released almost to the date two years later with the GameCube. Uh, but the Dreamcast had a one-year head start on the competition, and that's the PlayStation 2 came out next. Uh, 13 months later, in 2000, the PlayStation 2 dropped for two ninety nine ninety nine for 300 bucks, And, of course, as we all know, totally dominated in sales. Did you buy that day one as well, the PS2? I couldn't because I couldn't find it. That was, yeah, it was back when... It. Uh, trying to buy consoles was very difficult. Obviously, the Dreamcast was a little bit easier. I think I mm-hmm. pre-ordered that at Toys R Us. Right. PlayStation right. Two, I couldn't find it anywhere. It took, I think it took six months. When did it come out? You you released? It eight. was October twenty. Yeah. So I think it was like in March of two thousand one. I remember, and I was scared. So I'll tell this story real quick. <clears throat> I worked with this guy. He was nice, but he kind of was shady seemed shady and he was like dude i can get you a playstation 2 just give me 300 dollars. i'll drive to walmart on my lunch break and go buy it for you okay i think he said he had a friend at walmart or something like that always Uh, and i and i asked him like 
you know, 20 times. Like, I'm like, are you serious? Like, you're not going to just take my money and, you know, never come back to work? He's like, no, dude, I'll go get it. I know you want it. So I pulled out the cash right then and there, <clears throat> gave it to him, drove off of his lunch, came back, showed me a PS2. I was like, holy crap, I got a PS2. But yeah, that was like six months after it launched. Gotcha, okay. Or some months after. Well, and then the next year is when, within three days of each other, the Microsoft Xbox, their first jump into console gaming, and the Nintendo GameCube both released that next fall. So now you had four major players uh, for this for this console generation. So did you own all four of these at some point, at, all at one time? Absolutely. Did Absolutely. you? Okay. okay. Yeah, I bought the Dreamcast day one. I got the PlayStation 2 probably three to six months after it launched. I really can't remember. Um, the Xbox, now that one was a little bit different story because I didn't buy that one right away, probably because I probably wanted the GameCube more. I can't remember, to be honest with you. Um, <clears throat> but I didn't want an Xbox until I went to, who it, he's now my pastor, he was my youth pastor back then, uh, went to his house, and he and his cousin had bought an Xbox, and they bought Halo. Yep, and then I it. got to play Halo with him, and I was like, me and my brother looked at each other, and we were like, we need to get an Xbox. Yep, exactly. Halo does it for everybody. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't remember yes. when I got it, but I definitely got it within a year of it being out. Yeah, so I was very in a very different place during this generation. I was just starting college, and my funds were limited, and I was sticking mainly to continuing on my N64 and PS1 gaming, as well as a few things on PC, but then also just going to college. So I didn't buy any of these things day one, but I did within a few months, basically as soon as it was regularly available, uh, I did get a PS2. There were just too many games that were starting to come out for it that I was excited about, and the backwards compatibility basically gave me a good excuse to upgrade my soon to be failing ps1 as it was falling apart so the ps2 was kind of a no-brainer for me and that's the one that i got and i love that system so this conversation for a couple reasons i'm going to be incredibly biased so i hate to admit this but you're going to have a much more objective opinion as to which system was better but i did have an experience with each of them even though i only owned i've one. always had the better opinion and i'm always more objective because i'm yeah, yeah. People think objective when they think about you most of the time. <laughs> they don't think of crazy fanboy bias guy. Yeah, they never him. think. I think objective is the first word that comes. And humble. Objective. I think they and all yeah. they just object to me talking is what they do. <laughs> just like, oh, Derek, object. I'm so, sure Craig Flark is over there behind his desk, <laughs> triggered right now. Object. <laughs> So what? How old were you when these things came out? Were you in college age? Were you working? Like, what was your life set up when when you got these systems? Do you remember? All right. So nineteen ninety nine is when the Dreamcast came out. So I would have been twenty years old. Okay. Working at You're Sam's. So Club. old. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was. Uh, that was. This was the generation where I became an obsessive hardcore gamer it is the generation okay. that it's not that generations before that i didn't care those generations were more limited i wasn't working when those systems and consoles came out that mm -hmm. they were all completely dependent on will my mom buy this for me and right. most of the time the answer was no like yes i got a playstation and i got a few games but it's not how it was when this generation came in I bought a Dreamcast on day one. I think I walked out of the store with like four or five games that day. Uh, and then came back like two or three days later because I realized Soul Calibur was like one of the highest rated games. And I was like, I gotta have, or maybe it was a couple weeks after the system came out, Soul Calibur launched. And I was like, I gotta have this game. So I just mm -hmm. kept buying games for, for the Dreamcast. And then I did the same thing with all the other three. I bought them as soon as possible. And I loaded up on games. My collection was like at two or three hundred games at that point. Like, so what was what was the first <clears throat> game or a couple of games that you were like, yep, here we are, we're in the next generation. This is not what I've experienced before. What were the couple of games that made you kind of 
feel that I am super hardcore about these systems now. You know, I mean, about gaming now. What were some of the, well, those games? The games that really, really stuck out for me, this is going to be odd for the first one I'm going to say, for the Dreamcast, was I was a huge Hydro Thunder fan. <clears throat> like, me and my buddies used to go to a bowling alley all the time, and we would play... They had the cabinet set up where you had four players could play Hydro That Thunder. was fun. I remember that, yeah. Yeah, so we used to do it, like, a lot. Like, we would go yeah. to the bowling alley a lot. It was, like, 20 minutes away. That was pretty much what we did every weekend. We'd all get together, go play um, Hydro Thunder a lot, go bowl a game, go back to Hydro Thunder, and then go to Village Inn and that, then call it a night. Like, that's what we did. So when the Dreamcast launched with, I believe Hydro Thunder was a launch game. Okay. That was another reason why I had to have the system. It had all these games. I was like, I gotta have these. And right. so, Hydro Thunder is one of the biggest releases for me because I played tons and tons of hours of that game with my friends. Mm -hmm. You know, we would play it multiplayer or we would play it single player and then trade the controller off. But we put a lot of hours into that. As far as the Xbox, I would say Halo's the easy answer. I mean,. Going into it, I wasn't a big first-person shooter fan. I still, to this day, like first-person shooters, but I'm not, like, a fanboy of them. Um, right. So when I first started playing Halo, I played it mainly for the multiplayer, just to play with friends. We would uh, system link. Uh, I have s several memories where we would get four Xboxes together, 16 players, four on a screen, Yeah. and we would just talk crap and kill each other all night like literally all night yep. um so that was a big one for me and and then i eventually gave the, the single player slash co-op campaign a, a shot and i ended up playing through that one like three times by myself and with my cousin the guy that doesn't exist um so that became one of the the biggest biggest games for me of that generation right um, okay there's Just so you know, let me, let me let me give you the quick list of Dreamcast launch games. I thought this was interesting. Uh, you had Arrow Wings, Air Force Delta, Blue Stinger, Cart, Flag to Flag, Expendable, The House of the Dead 2. I remember that. Mm -hmm. uh, Hydro Thunder was a launch game. Monaco Grand Prix, Mortal Kombat Gold, NFL 2K. That mm -hmm. was a big franchise there. Uh, NFL Blitz 2000, Pen Pen Tr Trill Salon. Never heard of that. Uh, uh, Power Stone, Ready to Rumble Boxing, Sonic Adventure, Soul Calibur was huge. Uh, TNN, Motorsports, Hardcore Heat, Tokyo Extreme Racer, and Trick Style. So a lot of racing games, a few sports games, and then a few uh, unique games to that system that were very As you were naming them off, I was counting, and I, I bought at least seven or eight of those. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I loved I loved some of those like House of the Dead. I thought Hydro Thunder was a really fun game. I thought the water looked really cool. I had the same mm -hmm. feeling watching that as I did playing Wave Race on the sixty four back in the day. It was yeah. just kind of like a mind blowing technology upgrade. Like, wow, that looks amazing. So I, I remember Hydro Thunder. And then of course, uh the best looking football game at the time I thought was NFL two K. I thought it just Oh yeah. I thought it was amazing. So That was very good day one. Very solid lineup there for uh for the Dreamcast. And then for the PlayStation 2, now that I'm on that topic, I'm just going to scroll down here and give you a quick run of the PlayStation 2 ones. We had Armored Core 2, uh, DOA 2, Hardcore, Dynasty Warriors 2, so a bunch of sequels. ESPN had a couple games, track and field and snowboarding. Uh, Eternal Ring, Evergrace, Fantavision, Gun Griffin Blaze. I haven't heard of most of those. Evergrace, I remember seeing but never playing. Uh, Madden 2001, Midnight Club. There you go. There's a pretty big one. Street mm -hmm. Racing. Uh, NHL 2001, Orphan, Scion of Sorcery, Ready to Rumble Boxing, Round 2, Ridge Racer 5, Silent Scope, Smuggler's Run, SSX, Street Fighter EX3, Summoner, Swing Away Golf, Tekken Tag Tournament, Time Splitters. Time Splitters was kind of interesting. Unreal Tournament, Wild Wild Racing, and X Squad. So between those two lists i would think the dreamcast had at least for me personally had a much more intriguing lineup ps2 had a bigger launch lineup but i liked the games that i heard listed there for the dreamcast personally just thinking about those. no i'm in agreement. yeah 
Um, and I won't, keep, I won't, I won't keep reading all these. I just wanted to compare those two right off the bat. But it's kind of interesting to think about what games came out originally. When we look back at these systems now, when I think back on the Dreamcast, I think of like Virtua Tennis and Skies of Arcadia and Crazy Taxi and Resident Evil Code Veronica. I forget which, was that two? I forget which Resident Evil that was. But these are the games that I remember either playing or like I've talked about before, watching friends play. Some of them made for really good like group games when you got a couple people all watching together. So that I think of kind of the compilation of games over the years. Same thing with PS2 and GameCube. You think about Wind Waker and, and others. We'll get to, but we don't always think about when they how they were first received. And I and I think that Dreamcast is still an enigma to me. What happened to that system? Because I think it had a pretty solid line launch lineup. It had a head start on the other systems, and. I'm not exactly sure. I can't put my finger on the one reason that Dreamcast struggled. They never got past 10 million sales. I think they were at 9.3, 9.4 million uh, consoles sold. They couldn't even get to that 10 million mark, which is not good for a major console player. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what happened. What do you think happened? What happened with the Dreamcast? What went wrong? They had a lead. They had a good launch lineup. They had some great franchises. They got some good third-party support. What happened with Dreamcast? I mean, I can't obviously answer that. I mean, I can only give my opinion is maybe the Saturn really crushed it. I mean, crushed its chances. Also, you have not, to remember, not like in a surfer dude crushed it way, like a bad, <laughs> yeah. Like, like it just it. Not a lot of people bought the Saturn, and the people that did buy the Saturn, I don't think they were in love with. Like, I never bought the Saturn, so why did I buy the Dreamcast? Well, it was that launch lineup. It was the first next-gen system. That was also another big reason. Yeah. Uh, I was ready for something new, something that looked better, and the Dreamcast did that. The yeah. Dreamcast also hooked up to the Internet, so you could play online. That's right, with um, Fantasy Star Online, right? <clears throat> yeah, so it was ahead of its time. It had all, everything necessary. It had good games. It had a good uh, system as far as graphics and hardware. It also introduced playing online, as did the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox and all that as well later on. Um, but the only thing I can think of is the bad taste in the mouth of, of the Saturn. Yeah. Saturn was $400, right? I think at launch. It, it was, yeah. It was so this way was too half expensive. That. And yeah, it didn't get the support that they needed. Right. This was a more powerful system that came in at half price, and yet even though it was loaded with good games still and i think if i remember correctly it started off good like i believe it sold lights out i believe okay. when the playstation 2 gamecube and xbox came rolling out that's when it died okay it's, it wasn't continuing to build <clears throat> anymore because people you know because every generation you have the the people like me who buy everything day one Oh, you know, at least now. Um, back then, I couldn't, for some reasons, buy day one. But if I could, I would have. That's just uh -huh. my personality. There are several versions of me out there. If you if you announce a system, they'll buy it day one. Right. Okay. I I definitely believe there's a lot of people that bought the Dreamcast like that. They were like, "This looks good. It's only two hundred dollars. I'm buying it." Right. Right. Yeah. But then yeah. there's a lot of gamers, and I believe there's more of them that are not like me. That are they're very uh, they 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 the type that you have to sell them on everything that they're gonna buy. They don't just go well, it's Sega or it's Sony or it's Nintendo. I'm gonna buy it. Like you have to sell it on them, and they yep. take their time, or they may be a little more stingy and be like, no, no, I'll wait for it on sale. Well, the other and, problem that they faced was that it was no longer Sega versus Nintendo. There was a new player in the game, and Sony. And that's yeah. not even that's not even to mention Microsoft, who I'm not sure if they had announced theirs yet, but Sony had. Sony just a few months, maybe six or seven months before the Dreamcast came out, they announced the PlayStation Two, and so hype for that system was already sky high. And I even remember yeah. it, even in my high school with friends of mine who weren't even big video game fans that I knew of were like, "Yeah, the PS Two!" Like everyone was talking about the PlayStation Two. It was it was the hot topic in tech industry for that almost two years till it came out. Well, so, and that goes back to, and I know we've talked about this before, and this goes back several, several episodes, but I believe PlayStation has replaced Nintendo 
with people who don't know games very well, they may have said in the past, oh, I'll get the next Nintendo console, not right. knowing there's others out there. Yep. That is now PlayStation. It's yeah, not I agree, Xbox, because back in the day, if you were playing Nintendo, any video game, they, the parents would be like, yep, they're playing Nintendo. They don't care what the system is. They just call yeah. They 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 uh, swapped out the word video game for Nintendo, and I think you're right. Around that time, people began swapping out the term video games for PlayStation. You're right. They were just like, oh, they're playing PlayStation. You could have been playing an Xbox. You could have been playing a Virtual Boy. They just called them all PlayStation. They didn't care. Yeah, it's so. kind of like, hey, what flavor of Coke are you drinking right now? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm not drinking Coke. I'm actually drinking Mountain Dew. But they'll say Coke even though they mean mm-hmm. soda. Exactly. You know? So, and that's what happens here, and I believe that's what happens. This is just, you know, me trying to figure it out, because, like I said, I think the Dreamcast started off quite well, if I remember correctly. I watched a documentary on it, and I can't remember it, but I think it sold really, really well, and I think once the PlayStation 2 came out, that's when it got crushed, is because, like you said, the PlayStation had already released before playstation one and it blew up yep you know it it, it, because of yeah. its lineup yeah. and so when playstation 2 was announced it was already going to surpass anything else that came out no matter if you had a lead on it the wii u had a had a lead on on the ps4 and the xbox and one it didn't and matter look at its sales. yeah now it, remind me did a dreamcast have a dvd player built into it don't think you could watch DVDs. See, I don't Dreamcast. think you could either, and I think, I think maybe PS2 that's just was me. The but only one that I f- could do that. Xbox could. Xbox will play DVDs. Ninety-nine percent sure. Yeah, we I all know the game. Or maybe, game. maybe you had to buy an add-on for it. But um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that Dreamcast did not. And so PS2 was coming. out. It was the first time that a company was like, not only can you play games on this, but also it can be your main entertainment unit. Even though they weren't quite to the point of having like online stores and internet browsers and all that, or social media, obviously those things weren't really big quite yet. Uh, they yeah, def- I know, I know people that bought the PS3 just to use the Blu-ray. Exactly, and I think Sony was onto something early on with the PS2, making it the the all-in-one um, unit that you would need under your TV. You don't need a DVD player anymore; you just need your PS2. So. They were really smart. I think that's where the cost came in. That's why it came out $100 more expensive than the competition. Uh, but I believe it paid off, obviously, in the end because they broke all kinds of... They, they still hold all kinds of records uh, for console sales. But um, I do know when the PS2 came out, I didn't get it right away, but it didn't take me long to get it because some of the games that came out... And I tried to list some of the key games for each system. Some of the games that came out for the PS2 were impossible to ignore. Uh, I mean, you'd mentioned Grand Theft Auto 3. That was an industry-changing game from Rockstar. Yeah. And Final Fantasy X, it took Final Fantasy from being, uh, even though I, I love, we've talked about this before, I love the old games. They hold a special place in my heart. But to Final Fantasy X brought it to the next gen. Final Fantasy was now officially in the next gen of, of visuals and just the way a game can be played and, and viewed and enjoyed. Um, as much as I love Nine, it was still very much of that old school JRPG and 10 brought it to the next level. You had games like Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3, which took the amazing classic that is Metal Gear Solid and turned it into much bigger in scope and in visual and storytelling types of games. Um, the Ratchet and Clank games, games like Okami, um, you had Psychonauts. And some of these are, are third party that went to other systems, but PS2 is primarily the place where people experienced a, a lot of these. Um, well, like the GTA games came out first on the PS2, exactly, and then like yeah. the Xbox got like a collection. And yeah, and they even I think Xbox might have gotten Vice City at the same time, right? I think by then maybe they got them both, but I can't quite remember. Um, I thought it was like a collection that came out with three Vice City. I bought the collection, so maybe that was just came out later. But I thought I remember it had all the games that had previously released on the PS2 all in one collection. Well, and this is where PlayStation took the reins. I mean, just took them right away from Nintendo in terms of platforming and even family-friendly style games. So not only were they dropping major mature titles like Grand Theft Auto and God of War 1 and 2 and Metal Gear Solid, but they were also putting out games like Sly Cooper, Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter. Um, Psychonauts isn't super kid-friendly, but it's definitely not 
offensive. It's it's more for at least middle schoolers. Um, they were putting out games and Okami. They were putting out games that everyone could enjoy, and they were they were taking just about every genre. The only thing that I think that they didn't quite master compared to the competition was maybe the first person shooter, it was still controlled by Microsoft at that point. Um, m- correct me if I'm wrong. I can't. Maybe there's a franchise I'm not thinking of. Uh, but I, I feel, I feel, I feel, and they had they had games like Black that was an interesting game, but it just didn't hold a candle to what uh, to what Microsoft was doing. Um, but that being said, they they conquered just about every genre. They really did, and they. I, I just thought that the PS2 lineup, looking back on it now, um, it's just impossible to ignore the high high quality. So I, like I said before. I am admittedly biased in this conversation. I am biased towards the PS2. It's the one that I owned. It's the one that I spent the most time with. And even though later on I got to experience some Dreamcast, uh, some Xbox, and a ton of GameCube games that I played via the Wii later on, I caught up on a lot of GameCube's major titles. Uh, I still, looking back on it, I hold the PS2 system and its lineup in higher esteem. It's actually, that's the first time that I played a game online, was Madden for the PS2. Um, at least a console game online. That was my first experience doing that. That was kind of a weird feeling to connect with someone online and play Madden one on one. I got crushed, but it was still kind of fun to play against a real human that that wasn't a predictable AI. Yeah, and, I uh, did that too, and I played SOCOM. You did you do a SOCOM? Okay, I forgot about SOCOM. I didn't put that on the list. Duh. That's the the night I got really really made fun of by my wife. Like, she was ripping me to shreds. I play, what it was, SOCOM had it built in where you could plug in a headset. Uh, okay. And you could speak commands into your your team. To your, okay, to your AI assistant. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, I don't remember the commands, but you could be like, flank left. <laughs> you know, all this stuff. So, Take I'm wearing cover. this headset. She actually took, like, a picture of me and made fun of me for years. But I'm like sitting on the couch. We're like newly, ma- you know, newly married, you know, and and she's so like, she, "What she, did I get into?" Yeah, so she's like watching me and listening to me as I'm sitting on the couch with this headset on, talking to myself. And then I was getting frustrated because I don't think they were doing what I was saying. Like the the mic wasn't picking me up, or <laughs> the game wasn't understanding. And so she was just watching and laughing. She's like, "You're such a loser." And I'm like, why? This is so cool. Like, and I'm trying to explain to her, like, I can s- tell them what to do. Oh, like, my they'll listen. Blah blah blah. And she didn't care. <laughs> All right. So your 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 opinion's biased. To, to kind is. of wrap this up, what I'm gonna do is, I owned all four. Okay. Did you ev- did you eventually own all four? I only eventually owned a PS2 and a GameCube. I never owned an Xbox or a Dreamcast. You are a failure. You are. <laughs> Failed g- gamer. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Go buy a Dreamcast. That means right. a lot. <laughs> All right. So here's what I'm gonna do. I I really loved all four, and okay. I could actually give arguments on why all four are better. You know, you know, one's better than the other. But when I break it down, the the answer that I would have, if you would have asked me this a few, you know what, if you would have asked this to without giving me a list of games. Uh-huh. If you just said off the top of your head, Derek, tell me what is the best system from that generation. By memories, I'm just going by what I remember having the most fun playing. Right. I would have told you the best system was the Dreamcast. That isn't to be one of those cool guys being like, well, the game or the system fails. So you just loved try it because hard. it's yeah. I'm a try hard. Yeah, try that hard. is not. That's not it. Okay. The, hashtag that, try hard. Hashtag try hard. I just love the system. I really did love the games. You're but, not alone in that. We actually, you'll, you guys will hear this at the end. We've got some of you listeners that we're adding to the, to the show, and I'm thankful for you guys sending those audio clips in. You're yes, not alone in you. that. So Brian Pelfrey in particular gave a major, some major love to the Dreamcast. So you're not alone. Yes. So again, without a list of games, you just asked me based off my memories. Dreamcast wins okay. hands down. All okay. right. Yep. But that being said, with lists of games in front of me. The game, the system that I love the most, that had the best games on it, in my opinion, hands down, easily, not even close, is Xbox. Because it had Knights of the Old Republic, Knights of the Old Republic 2, 
Jade Empire. Those three right there are already in my top ten of all time. That's all you need, yeah. So that right there, I haven't even talked about Halo. I haven't even talked about Fable. Those three games are top Mm. ten right there. And then you add in Death Row. Everybody knows how much I love Death Row. And it was a legit good game. If people go look it up, go look up Death Row reviews, you'll be shocked. The game scored, like, really high on on a lot of the big games media sites. It just didn't. I don't think it sold well because it was just, like, an odd game. After we talked about it a few months ago, I Googled it, and there's a lot of people that have a lot of love for that game out there. Yeah, I actually uh, Googled, like... Death Row 2, or, you know, trying to see if a sequel is in the work, and I saw a bunch of, like, message boards on Microsoft, yeah. people begging for they the game, it. like, yeah. please, even yeah. if you don't want to release a new one, just remaster yeah. the old one, or let us play it, so, and well, Don't I'm forget about them. games like Ninja Gaiden, or Ninja Gaiden, I yeah. should say. So, for me, the Xbox wins, and then the Dreamcast would come in second, the PlayStation 2 would come in third. And while I did love the GameCube and it had some great games like Resident Evil 4, the greatest Mario game of all time oh. with Mario Sunshine. Way and wrong. I will say this. So wrong. It has the second best Mario Kart game, Mario Kart Double Dash. So it is also a loaded system. It is. It I is. would put it in fourth place as okay. my most loved system. All right, oh, so and Zelda Wind Waker. How the heck Wind Waker. Forget? Yeah, and I, I think you can count Twilight Princess too because... You could make yeah. an argument that the better version of Twilight Princess before the Wii U remastered. The better version was definitely on was the GameCube. The GameCube yeah, because you don't have to do the waggle controls. Although I never, I only played it with the Wii, so to me it was fine. But most people would argue that the GameCube controller was was better. Um, I played it both, and I not to cut you off, but when I first started playing Twilight Princess on the Wii, it, it was a launch game. It was cool because it yeah. was your first experience yeah. with the Wii. But I. After probably five ten hours, somewhere in between there, I got tired of it and moved on. Yeah, in, in in no particular order, my favorite three games from the GameCube. Now that you're talking about those games, I, I would have to pick Wind Waker. I loved that game. I was surprised mm-hmm. how much I liked it. I thought I would think it's just a fun kitty version of the Zelda that I've come to know and love, but I loved it. I thought Wind Waker was amazing. I'd also put the Fire Emblem entry, Path of Radiance, up there. Um, it was the first time they went from that real pixelated 8 or 16 bit look to a much more 3D look it was very cool to see the characters brought to life like that um, loved that Path of Radiance game uh, and then it's kind of a tie uh, between a few I loved Metroid Prime but I played the trilogy version on the Wii and I liked the Wii aiming controls so I'm not sure how much I would have loved the GameCube controls mm-hmm. uh, but the Metroid Prime trilogy on the Wii I thought was really good because it's one of the few times the Wii mote was put to good use to actually aim and shoot um and of course Metal Gear, or, i'm sorry um uh, resident evil 4 boy was that a good game boy was that a good one so that so why don't we do that why don't we do that because i like that to end the show give our top three per system so you started with a gamecube yeah i'll do zelda said, i'll say zelda fire emblem and then metroid prime you can count one and two almost as one game but yeah those are my top three all right, so I would do Mario Sunshine. I'm not doing it in any particular order. Yeah, neither Resident mind. Evil 4, and then... Oh, this is tough, because it's going to be between... I'm going to say Double Dash. I wanted to say Wind yeah, Waker, it's but... A good pick. It's a good pick. Uh, I actually didn't beat Wind Waker on the GameCube. I beat it on the Wii U, so I'm going to go with Double Dash. And, of course, we, we would be remiss not to mention games like Super Smash Bros. Melee, which is considered by many to be the best Smash Bros. game. Games like Pikmin 1 and 2, which I never got into. Uh, the A great version of the original Metal Gear Solid from the PS1 is the Twin Snakes remake on the GameCube. It's shocking that they made that as an exclusive to GameCube, but it's really good. Star Fox Adventures, Rogue Squadron 2, and Luigi's Mansion. Other great GameCube games. And, and there were others. So just to mention those as well. Um, what about Dreamcast? Give me your, your favorite three. You know what? I'll give you my favorite three too since my experience is way limited compared to yours. Um, I I really liked Skies of Arcadia. It was a very cool mm-hmm. story. So I'll I would put that, put that in my top three. Um, I liked Virtua Tennis too. Other than Mario Tennis, the most fun I've had with a tennis game, considering it's a sport that I don't really follow. I loved the the modes they had in there, the career modes and things like that. I thought that was great. And then 
I'll throw Crazy Taxi in there just because it's just pure repetitive but pure arcade <laughs> fun. I loved Crazy Taxi. What about yours? I did love Crazy Taxi. I'm going to go with Soul Calibur, Hydro Thunder, and Resident Evil Code Veronica were the three I had the most fun with. Okay. And let's do PS2 last. Let's go to Xbox. What about right. the X- Xbox games? Um, you go first ah, this time. Or do you really need to think about that it? Hard. I already said them. Coder 1 and 2, Jade Empire. What if you just counted Coder 1 and 2, even though they're very different games? What if you counted them as one? What would be a third other than Coder and Jade? Ah, I'm going to put Death Row before Halo, so we'll go with Death Row. Okay. Um, I would go with Fable. Uh, I got to go with Coder. I just love those. Those are great games. So Fable, Nice of the Old Republic, and I would pick. Come on, Jade Empire. No, Halo. The Halo series, I guess. Halo 1 and 2. Yeah, both of those were great. Yeah. All right. PS2 time. PS2 time. This is... This is actually going to be hard for This me. is a very so tough pick. So you go pick. first. This is a very tough pick. I'm just going to pick one. All right. One of my top three would be Shadow of the Colossus. Trash. Oh, no. A lot of people like a lot of people like Eco as well, but I thought Shadow of the Colossus was a uh, superior game. So that's my that, that'd be my first top three. What about you? Uh, Twisted Metal Black. I didn't put that on here, but that's a good call. Isn't that, a lot of people consider that to be the best of the Twisted Metal series, right? Uh, my favorite is the original Twisted the Metal. The original. A lot okay. of people say okay. Twisted Metal Two is the best. Okay. And then Twisted right. Metal Black was kind of like the reboot of bringing the series back. Okay. Um, I know this one was a third party, and it was also on other systems, but it kind of, it could have gone I mean, on either if list. You played it on, yeah. I played Psychonauts on the PS2, and it was a oh really gosh. fun and funny game. I loved that game. I'm getting angry at you. This is yeah. two trashes in a row. Uh, Final Fantasy X's got to be on there for me. Uh, as much as I loved things like God of War and the Metal Gear Solid sequels, they wouldn't quite beat out the grand theft auto games and i'm if i had to pick of those three i'll just go with the biggest best and most elaborate one that was san andreas although vice city had the best story and gta 3 was groundbreaking san andreas was the actual best grand theft auto game on that system so that would be in my top three probably might be my favorite ps2 game i'm gonna go with see this is hard because grand theft auto 3 is probably the greatest game of that generation I well, I can't. That. I mean, I'll say this: it won't be my personal because I already said. But the objectively, top three it might be the best. Yeah, right? objectively, yeah. for what it did for the industry and how big it was, it yeah. probably is the best game of the century. But I'm gonna go with just for my personal picks: God of War. Yeah, that's one a good or pick. two, it doesn't matter. I really liked both of them a yeah. lot. Yeah, me too. Um, and it was definitely one of my favorite franchises on the PS3 or yep. PS2. And we, we totally ignored some things like Onimusha and Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, uh, Persona 4. There's just so many. That's why There's I said so let's many. just do three because we could so literally we just We could go forever. Them. We really could go forever. All right, just in, in case anybody was curious, the best-selling games. Did you already look at the best-selling games? you want to guess what those would be if you didn't look yet for each system real quick? For each system? Yeah, so for um, Dreamcast, what do you think was the best-selling game? Well, Grand Theft Auto 3 is going to be the best for the PS2. Um, Dreamcast, that's Sonic Adventure. I didn't Sonic see Adventure. that one. Okay, yeah, two and a half million sold. For PS2, you're close. It was a Grand Theft Auto game, but it was not th- GTA 3. Ooh, what is it? It was San Andreas with 20.8 million copies sold. I wonder how many 3 sold. Because I, I thought that was like a crazy... All right, whatever. What about um, uh, Xbox? Oh, that's Halo. Halo 2, yep. Eight and a half million. And the GameCube? Okay. It's got to be a Mario game. Uh, it's not Sunshine. Mario Kart? I would have guessed Mario Kart, but it's actually Smash Brothers. Super Smash Brothers Melee with seven and a half million sold. Oh, okay. So there you go. Great systems. Great generation of, of video game systems right there. And it's a hit at a weird time for me that I couldn't really afford them financially or with time. But now that I've had a chance to experience many of those games, I think a lot of those games hold up well, at least in the very core mechanics of them. Uh, even, you know, some of the visuals aren't quite there anymore. But, man, there's some great games. And we, as Derek said, we skipped through a bunch for the sake of time. We don't want to bore you with all of our thoughts on every single game. But we could probably talk for a long time about each of these systems <laughs> lineups that we just kind of flew through. 
Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to close out the show with a few listener audio clips. So thank you to Antonio Guillen. By the way, you guys check out the Platinum Achievement podcast that he is on. They do a great job over there. Also, Jake Roberson, he, he sent in his thoughts. Uh, I won't spoil it, but he's... He agrees with me. Uh, Brian Pelfrey, who has some Trash. great thoughts on the Dreamcast. Love you, Brian. <laughs> on the Dreamcast. Um, and then, of course, we had who I thought was going to be our good friend Michael Hruby. <laughs> but it's not him. It was someone writing in as Michael Hruby, and you'll find out who it is. It's amazing. Y- you won't believe the celebrity guest that joins us here at the end. So. Oh, wow. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, Derek, any final thoughts on the sixth generation of game consoles or just a general message to our audience? It's been a while since I've asked you to close us out. Uh, Buy Overwatch. Um, Stop listening to Tim's opinions. He'll lead you astray. And just take everything I say as truth, gospel. As always, Derek, well said. Well said. All right, so as promised, we now have some of you, the community, who want to chime in on the sixth generation of video game consoles. So we'll kick things off here with Antonio Guillen. <clears throat> He's our buddy from the Platinum Achievement Podcast, and Antonio has some thoughts on the PS2. But you know what? I won't steal his thunder. I'll let him take it. Antonio, what do you think? It's crazy because that generation of consoles and games hit at a time when I was in college and it's kind of a, a weird time. Like you hear about people in college playing things like Madden or, or maybe even getting together for Halo. But one of the more unique experiences, one of the ones where I think really, you know, fit well in that time was Rock Band. Uh, no, Guitar Hero 2. Sorry about that. Guitar Hero 2. Because um, I think it was a real great social game. And that was kind of unexpected at the time. It was simple enough where you could hand it to anybody around and they could you know try it out and then they could you know play along really quickly and I just have so many great memories just having uh you know dorms full of people at a party or something and you could whip that game out and have people you know watch along and have a good time play along have a good time and uh yeah it was a unique experience which I think separates it from uh, you know a lot of you know games is it was right when the the music genre was still fresh so I'd have to go with PlayStation 2 version of uh, Guitar Hero uh, 2. Antonio, I can't disagree with that, man. The uh, the rock band and Guitar Hero craze certainly was worth mentioning. So I know I had a lot of fun with that, especially with uh, our youth group that I was in charge of. So totally agree with that. And uh, so, yeah, now on to Brian Pelfrey. And here's a little spoiler alert. He likes to Dreamcast. Hey, what's up, Fathers of the Grind? This is Brian Pelfrey, and I'm here to share my love of the Sega Dreamcast. And I want to give thanks for everything that we can thank the Dreamcast for in modern gaming. The NBA 2K franchise started on the Dreamcast. Official online play, internet browsing, keyboard and mouse support started on the Dreamcast. A wealth of great fighting games. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, DOA 2, Soul Calibur, Power Stone 1 and 2, Marvel vs. Capcom. You name it, it was there. If you loved fighting games, unlike Tim, you needed to have a Dreamcast. So many great RPGs like Skies of Arcadia, Grandia 2. I could just go on and on. The Dreamcast for me at the end of the day is the Chappelle show of game consoles. It was only around for two years, but what a great, fantastic two years it was. The Dreamcast, I love it. You should too. Well said, Brian. And it sounds like you at one point worked for Sega, so I'm sorry for your loss. (laughs) No, but seriously, I appreciate the love for the Dreamcast. It truly was, as you heard earlier in the episode, a great system with some really cool games. So... Thank you, Brian. And now on to our friend Jake, who is going to throw some love to a system that hasn't been mentioned yet. So, Jake? Hey, guys. This is Jake Roberson. And although the PlayStation 2 is by far the most superior console in the generation we're discussing, the best game does not belong to it. The best game is, without a doubt, Super Smash Bros. for the GameCube. Now, numbers 2 and 3... Our God of War 1 and 2. Yeah. Dropping the mic. Nice mic drop there, buddy. And I agree with you in in some ways that uh, Smash Brothers was pretty amazing. As well as, of course, God of War 1 and 2 were incredible games. So, well said. Well done. And it's nice to see some GameCube love thrown out there for this sixth generation. And now, finally, of course, this is last but not even close to least, 
the most exciting guest we've ever had on the show. You know what? I'll just let you listen. Here we go. My name is Arnold Schwarzenegger, and my favorite game has to be the Terminator Redemption on the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube. It's a third-person action game where you play as me, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Immerse yourself in a world where you protect John Connor from the evil Skynet Corporation. If you don't think this game is the greatest, then you can chill out, Tiquad. Hasta la vista, baby. Wow, that was inspirational, and uh, I'm humbled. I'm humbled to have such a great man be a part of our show. So thank you, Arnold, and and of course, Michael Fruby as well for uh, for making that connection for us, for, for introducing us. So thank you all for participating, and again, I hope the conversation continues in our Facebook group, and we're approaching E3, so be on the lookout for more E3 chatter coming up soon. And again, thank you guys for your support. You guys are the best. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Who is your daddy? I am the father. You fathers will understand. My father taught me many things. I got an idea. How about you all sit there quietly while I make dad noises? <laughs>